of Group A, and now we are down to the elimination match already. One person is going to stop their WCS Premier League right here. One person will fight for another chance to move on to the round of 16. Now, so far in the group, of course, we've had, I, I guess you could say, the expected results that most people would have argued. I think it was a little bit tough between Hearts and Major, but Polt still edging through against Petraeus. Now, on the bottom side of the bracket, it's going to be Petraeus versus Major. We talked about it briefly, but Chris, what are we looking at here? I mean, Major, for him to come to the round of 32 all three seasons, it'd be a real nice treat to say, you know what? Going to make it to Poland this season. Going to make it to the round of 16. Yeah, I would love to see Major take it a little bit further. I feel like he is one of those players that could get more comfortable as the tournament goes on. At the same time, it's really hard to judge right now because I feel like Harston played pretty well in his matches, and I feel like more than Pet playing insanely well. It was more like Polt not playing up to his true potential. So it's kind of hard to judge because Pat versus Polt was very close. It was a 2-1. We I don't think anybody expected that. And yeah. it was close games at that. So it's like it kind of feels like Pet played well, but all in all I feel like Polt played worse more than Pet played better. And Harstam <laughs> played better than Major <laughs> played worse. Yes. Do you agree? It, it all made sense. Right. It was, yeah. it was just funny because it started chart. sounding like a tongue twister. Yeah. It's like, Pet played better than Polt played Pet, and then it just goes Too many on. Peas. There's <laughs> a lot of peas in there. Yeah, <laughs> There definitely is. It's a sausage party with another pea. <laughs> uh, 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 with, uh, yeah, I mean, Jeff, what are, you, what are your thoughts on Petraeus having cast that game? What did you see from Petraeus? I mean, results, pleasantly surprising, but what about the play itself? Oh, yeah. I mean, he, I, th I thought he's, I mean, for a guy that the word on the street is he's, you know, given up pro gaming for the most part and is now a student, Versus Polt, the guy that's been winning since before a lot of our audience has probably even been watching StarCraft, mm, yeah. like since the very beginning, uh, that was a really close series. And I honestly felt in Game 3 there was opportunities there for Petraeus to pull off the upset and beat Polt. And then Polt's fa facing Major, probably the biggest threat to beat him before we saw Petraeus almost beat But anyways, that's all hypothetical. Uh, this match, I I'm interested because for both these guys, it would be so disappointing just to go 0-2 real quick like that uh, for different reasons. For Major, it's a little bit different. It's like... Everyone keeps talking about the, the hype for him, but okay, let's go to the man pictured here first, Petraeus. You came close to beating Polt, but you lose here? That's still a disappointing tournament yeah. for him. It's, it's like, yeah, it gave good games. Good games are nice. But that's the kind of stuff people say before they head to the caster and analyst desk like myself. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the high mark for us. For a guy like this who came all the way over from New Zealand, uh, winning a couple of rounds would be amazing. It would be really nice, and he needs to do it here. Yeah, let's, let's talk about kind of how each player is going to be looking at this, right? As you were just mentioning, both for Major and Petraeus, it's very meaningful at the same time for a different reasons than some other players, right? It's not like these players are I'm going to secure yeah. a better seed in BlizzCon or something like that. It's really for much more personal reasons for both of these guys to try to survive. It's here prize money. It's showing off that they're worth a damn. I mean, Major got countered build order-wise. Like, he went for a greedy yeah. third CC both times and faced a sloppy, I agree with Chris on this, uh, two base Colossus push, which has been around since the beginning of time. If he loses here, if Petraeus keeps up his level of play that he did against Polt and beats Major, what a disappointing trip it is for him. Just comes out and gets his butt kicked by guys that he probably could beat. Yeah, it, it would be a bit of a disappointment. And, and again, it's not we're, it's not to take away from either of these players, but that's just the kind of corner they've been pushed into, right? Either of them, if they lose here, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, we will be kicking off with Bridgehead. Now, we talked about that a little bit last match, of course. Uh, some fun things there. Polt Making a couple mistakes on that one, not really taking into the whole map. Probably not, especially, you know, have Major having had time to watch that game. We're probably not going to mm -hmm. see those mistakes come out against Petraeus here. But what do we think? Petraeus, that's the map that uh, he performed against Bolt. Is it going to re repeat here against Major? I feel like it's a comfortable map for him, to be honest. And then going into the second map as well, Cactus Valley, that's a map Bolt vetoed and a lot of Terran players veto in general. So all in all, I feel like the maps are a little bit more favored towards Petraeus. Um, I, of course, would love to see this series go to the game three and on top of that I'm kind of pulling for Major. I feel like Petraeus yeah. is a great player and I feel for him but Major is kind of the guy that never lived up to the potential he should have. Right. He's been to Korea, he's been playing since Brood War even and then on top of that he doesn't have a team. There's a lot of things that he still needs to do to you know feel accomplished in his career. I this feel. is a more desperate match for him and you know I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going into it pretty optimistically like Major if you could typify him, is a mechanically extremely sound player, very strong macro mechanics in particular. His decision making has always been kind of his lacking point, and that's a big deal in TVP in particular. Like you're you're trying to read into which tomfoolery the Protoss is digging into the bag of tricks with. But in TVZ, this has been the classically extremely like mechanical matchup. This is where two people enter, and a StarCraft 
beast emerges from there. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that favors Major here. I felt like if you looked at Petraeus' games, he was beating Polt in a lot of ways in the earlier decision-making, and, and not necessarily macro, but the decision-making there. But then as the game went on, started to fall further and further behind, and that's where Major shines. All right. Well, again, it is kind of do or die time already for these two players, right? If you lose here, you're out from the Premier League. That's the end of your WCS run for 2015. We are in Season 3, everyone, of course. This this is the one that counts for a lot of these guys, even if it's not towards the BlizzCon run for some of them. it's Again, it's your last chance to kind of mark something on 2015 when you end the year. Yes, it's the send-off for the year. Like, we have no more IEMs with StarCraft that I know of. There's a couple more dream hacks, and then there's a couple of other events. But other than that, like WCS and, and these other events, that's where you go, hey, in 2015, I had a pretty good year. Did you see that season three where I made a deep run? Like that's, that's the kind of stuff these guys want, both for their fans, but also for their professional careers and moving forward. Yeah. All right. Well, game is ready for both of these players. Again, in the elimination match of Group A, Major versus Petraeus, who will live to fight one second chance in Group A. Let's find out. With a big rise in the foreign scene, Petraeus has made his way so far up into the accolades in the hearts of a lot of other non-Korean players, a top practice partner, but a pretty quick bow out after just a year of really sticking to it. Major's been in it for so long, Roddy. Is this, is this it for Petraeus? Could be. I think Major is the favorite for the majority of the diehard Starcraft fans out there. I'm sure Major looks at this series as well thinking he is the favorite going into it. But once again, that first series of the day he had was a very frustrating one, Nate. That's right. It was pretty tricky and I expect to see a very different best of three here than the last Terran versus Zerg we had. Of course, in the left side of Bridgehead, we have the Mexican Terran player, Major, going up in a uh, pretty... Interesting TVZ starting off on Bridgehead. An unusual choice against the My Insanity New Zealand Zerg, Petraeus. I've been talking a lot about this map in some of the WCS Challenger matches I've casted. This match has grown on me so much, Nate. I haven't been more wrong about a map than this one in a long time. When it first got introduced, I was like, ah, shall I veto it? Shall I do this? For the first time in a very long time, shall I veto a map? And I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to give it a fair shot. And this map, I think it's so fun. I've had so many great games on it myself. I think a couple of the best games I've seen have been on this map. Of course, I'm not sure if you caught the legend... Oh, I might be in already. The legendary ZVZ between Firecake and Zenster on this map. It was just so cool. And even earlier today, you know, Petraea stopping that Hellbat timing that looked so incredibly scary. At first I was like, oh my god, it's going to be a massacre. He just stops it, later on destroys the rocks, Paul not paying attention, and then it just creates very unique scenarios, unique games. And more opportunities for a player to abuse the carelessness of another, for mm -hmm. sure, with the way that Holt wasn't watching those back rocks. And I do have to agree with you, this map has made th has actually been much more fun to watch than I had previously anticipated. Haven't seen too many of the... Uh, <laughs> actually, I haven't seen too many of the, the Heart of the Swarm games played on this recently, but it certainly is fun to play overall. Because this one, I believe, I uh, also played a reasonable amount of games on this one in the beta, too. Yeah, Petraeus, uh, I was probably pretty sure that Major was going to go open up with a command center first over here, which indeed, you know, was the case. Very economic opening. No extract is down yet for Petraeus. He's just going to try to squeeze out as many drones as possible. Are we expecting Major to mech it up a little bit over here? I was... I was going to try to not mention it, Kev. Oh, why not? I don't know, man. It's your job, Nate. You I don't you know. You can't leave me the, hanging. I was scared. I was scared. <laughs> I've heard some scary things about mech. In TVZ, some people saying it's really strong, Roddy. Yeah. Calling Terran strong? It's madness. Well. But it's possible. I will I will say when I look at the maps for this series, Terraform sticks out as a okay. really good mech map mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Bridgehead is actually really weird for me. Because I think there's a way where you can actually break down those rocks and take that base as your third, and this really small ramp makes it easier to defend two points at once because if you take that low ground third base you're still defending those massive that massive area where the rocks are and the massive area where your third base is much easier for a zerg to abuse you with things like roaches and hydralisks or even mutalisks so 
I would prefer to see Bio just on this map, and then he can make it happen in the rest of the series. Major is a really interesting character when it comes to that department, because, you know, a lot of Terrans are either Mech Terran or they're Bio Terran, but Major has always been kind of unpredictable. Even in one series, there will be, let's say, two games he's going to play Mech, and one game he plays Bio or the other way around. Sometimes it's full on Mech, sometimes it's full on Bio, and I do kind of like that. It shows that he's not a one-trick pony. He has mastered both styles pretty damn well. And must be kind of frustrating for a Zerg player to play against, because, you know, I know as a Protoss point of view, if I know someone's going to play mech, I already have a very different approach. Now, fortunately for me, there's not a whole lot of Terrans out there who do it, Nate. Yeah. But, you know, if you can, you know, cut a couple corners here and there, because the timings are all so different from each other. I'm, I'm getting the impression from Major's opening that he is looking to do something a little bit aggressive. He's continued to pump out Marines without getting a tech lab, and that Viking will likely be followed up by a medevac, and then potentially even in armory, the widow mine follow up is actually a bit a bit different. I was uh, I was thinking that he would continue to pump out Hellions behind this, but Major always kind of does these weird funky openings. But as you mentioned, you know, being a very flexible player that he is, you know, Petraeus is expecting Mech from what he's seen so far. He's going for a very fast plus one one Roach opening, which can work against bio builds. But if he's up against Mech, then it's like, this is the ideal build for Petraeus to be doing. Mm -hmm. There is one Spore Crawler in the back of the natural. There's no Spore Crawler in the main base. So since that Medivac is going to be out soon, he could potentially fly those two Widow Mines across the map. And if he drops them in the main, could be rather frustrating. Now, of course, the Zerg is already a layer, so we can always morph an Overseer into an, uh, and it an will Overlord be, into an Overseer. It will be a bio build out of Major. He's starting up his double engineering bay and stim packs. So we're not going to see that big, slow mech army that, uh, you know, with a more drawn out sort of positioning type play. This map, it's really easy to abuse mech positioning, in my opinion. Even with as many choke points as there are for the tanks, you still get, you can still be hit from so many different places oh, at once. He could potentially drop those mines between the main base and the natural. That could be very frustrating for roaches to make their way over. I'm curious to see how Major is going to go about this aggression. Should be able to do a lot of damage though, because no Overseers over here. No Spore Crawler either, and there's going to be two Widow Mines, not just one, but two. He's repositioning one of the Mines. I don't really like that, because the thing's going to die. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, does not get a chance to fire that Widow Mine, actually not killing too much itself. So, Major comes in, doesn't really do too much. Also just lost a Viking on the south side into, uh, against that only Sporkrat that was out. Petraeus is having units everywhere in the right places. He's kind of looking for a 1-1 one -one Roach timing Petraeus over here. Petraeus could actually just kill him right now. Yeah, I, mean, I actually think if Petraeus, he could go to the, there's no bunker, so he could go to the rocks, he could go straight to his base. I think Petraeus could actually just kill Major. I mean, he's going back to droning behind this. He doesn't want to put all of his axe in one basket, but there are still 17, 19 roaches marching across the map. And that is obviously a few more than your standard five defensive roaches. Yeah, I actually, I would really like to see Petraeus try to do something here. If, if he had all of his roaches here together, well, then I think he actually the, does he just the clear it up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's a good couple of Marauders with the SCVs oh, being pulled too. Good pickup so far by Major. Major's yeah. really gonna have to micro his heart out, and he's doing that so far. I love it, using the SCVs to keep these Marauders alive. Major handling this in style so and far, closes, another pickup. Closes the door too, so the reinforcing Roaches yeah. are not in a position to actually help that easily. The Marauder pickups were it. This wow. could have been, if he had allowed those Roaches to get right on top of those Marauders and just clean them up one by one, it could, it could already be over. And he's still taking a lot of damage, still losing a good number of SCVs. These roaches have already done what they need to do yeah. because Petraeus droned up behind this. But still, you know, this could have been this could have been a game losing moment for Major, and I'd argue possibly still is. Yeah, it could have been over. Now he's just down 34 workers. He's still but got a chance, Roddy. I've heard news are very good. Can you confirm? Can confirm. <laughs> are yeah. they are they 34 worker deficit good? <laughs> you know, I like I say. You know, nothing is nothing is impossible when you have three command centers and a dream, Roddy. <laughs> All you need is a Mew and a dream. That's right. As the Spire is being uh, morphed in as well, but still, very good job there by Major. That, that could have been so much more ugly. Instead of losing 34 SUVs, oh. he could have maybe ended up losing 45 or 50. But he, re I like picking up the Marauders is one thing to dodge some shots, but I really loved how he used the mobility of the Metavex to drop them on the other side of the SUVs, keeping those Marauders safe. That was very sexy. But in the end, you know, those Roaches still did a lot of work. You know, I, I would like to point out too, uh, despite the fact that Petraeus is going to switch back into like a Zergling based army and get later Banelings speed and later plus one melee it's actually quite nice that he despite during all that pressure actually prevented the armory from going down so major still hasn't started his 2-2 upgrades which means betrays to be a pretty good spot yeah. there 
But this is one of these moments. So if you look at Army Spry right now, it's like 49 against 35. This could be a moment where Major, if he finds an opening, if the units are in the wrong place for Petraeus, Major is able to do some work because he's going to have Stim Bio, Combat Shield will finish up soon. And this is a moment where Petraeus, you know, he's not really ready yet to deal with the mobility of these meta packs because the Spire isn't done yet, doesn't really have any mutas, but Major needs to find an opening. And so far he's not finding one because of good Overlord spread and creep spread. Yeah. I think at this point, like if you've done this much damage in the early game as Petraeus, just take it slow, wait for your economy to bolster up, get those medevacs, uh, get those with the, with the mutalisks, of course. And contrary to the way that he played against Pult, you get this fourth base set up, then you're just constantly cranking out units, and that's where that's where most Zergs find their success in this matchup against him. Yeah, Major is right now down a little bit in supply, still up slightly when it comes to army supply. Uh, but upgrade department, that's going to be uh, a big worry as plus two Carapace is going to finish up now already. Well, Major hasn't even started his plus two at attack or upgrade for that matter, or armor. Yeah, this series, man, this is so interesting because I, you know, you're never really sure because Major will always add like these little tweaks to the things that he'll do. You know, he's, you know, you could almost say he's like, he's not quite all there when it comes to the build orders. He'll, he'll try to copy the top builds, but he'll do like these interesting little things where he messes with it a bit. The way that he opened up made him very vulnerable to the roaches because of that, but he also did like that pult thing where he gets, he just only built marauders out of that tech lab barracks, and mm -hmm. things like that are what allow him to survive against pushes that on ladder you normally just die to when your attack doesn't kill the zerg. Well, uh, Major is right now realizing that it's going to be harder and harder for him to do anything on the other side of the map, especially since that Spire has been out or has been done for a while, and there are 10 Mutalisk on the map now. Petraeus wants to probably work on these rocks again. It did miracles for him in his series against Bolt. I'm sure Major was watching it, and he has a depot. He's going to drop a missile turret there as well. It will have a finish up. A couple of Marines going to try to protect this missile turret. I like small stuff like that already. Just make it a little bit harder for Mutalisk to not hover above those rocks and just take it out with ease. I, I, still, I still say that I, I, re, I think Petraeus is just in a, in a much better position simply because the Terran, your goal is always to march down the field and kill that fourth base. And now Petraeus has actually established it long enough that he's got a couple creep tumors over there, he's got a big enough maxed out army, he's really just looking to catch this, uh, this force, but we could actually have like a weird sort of run home and defend scenario up ahead. Well, I mean, actually, the main door is just open, so a lot of Zerglings can make their way into the main base. This could be very frustrating, as Major has finally recovered from the economic damage he took earlier. And again, we'll end up losing 22 SCVs. Petraeus is pretty much still maxed out. There's still so many bailings as well. Major's army was just way out of position. Yeah, no wall in the main base. Like, that's just, you know, it's just a, it's a sloppy error oh, out of Major, to be honest. And that allows the links to come in. Petraeus... Not uh, not falling back just yet, and with all the reinforcements he has on the way, getting his hive up, more and more mutalisks, and the lack of that plus two upgrade, those zerglings are actually more difficult to kill than they would normally be. A lot of them with very low health could have already been dead if we were on even upgrades in this game. <laughs> all 50 SUVs have died already in this game. That really shows that Petraeus has done a phenomenal job in keeping the economy slow from Major, and I love that you brought up the fort base. Major is not even going to try anymore. He'll just tap out. As Gigi is called, and Petraeus, perhaps surprisingly, takes a 1-0 lead. Now, you don't always expect to run into the Zerg army in the center of the field, but when you completely sidestep it, you know, it comes down to the map awareness for both players. Petraeus' army is just faster. You have Speedlings, Mutalisks. Though that's the army that's kind of meant to move around a little bit more, even without the creep spread. But for Major, you're caught out like that, and then, in a normal scenario, like on most maps where the wall is a little bit more standard, it's easy to see. You slam the door in the Zerg's face, you're like, ha I have time to come back and defend. But this time, there was no door. The Zerglings came in, they ate all the SCVs. Yeah, normally you lose a bunch of SCVs in your third base, but then at least, you know, you Just will be able to... lift it off yeah. and you're okay. Exactly, you can sort of stabilize from that. You're going to lose a couple of depots maybe here and there. A couple of mules won't be able to do the mining that they normally do. But that's it. But the moment you have to defend three locations at once, when the Zerglings running into the back of your natural, into your main base, and of course you're losing everything on the low ground where your third base was, that's where things get very, very complicated. But, you know, it's not completely fair to fault Major for all that because he was already in a very rough position after the opening. To be, to be honest, there. his micro is the only reason why this game basically yeah. happened because he. In most scenarios, if you have a guy who just fights with what you know they have at the start of the game, or that medevac is still on the map, you just lose. The roaches come in, they focus the marauders, it's over. With 1-1, one, one, those marines take like 39 hits to kill a roach. You, you need the marauders to defend this. 
Yep, uh, here we can take another look at some of these good pickups. You know, that pickup was so fast, I thought there was like no saving that Marauder, and now he drops him on the other side of the SCVs. I thought it was so and cool. If he walks in and kills those three Marauders, this game is over. Like, it just ends right now, because the SCVs and Marines, even with two medevacs, they're gonna, they already, it already takes a long time to kill these roaches. But when the reinforcing ones come in, it's that's it. That'd be that would be the end of the game. So Major played very well to, to stay in it, but it was just so tough to actually close what, it. What I love here from Petraeus is instead of keeping all the roaches at the same place, he spread up a couple of roaches to the north side. So those roaches are working on these SUVs over there, which makes it harder for Major to not take even more economic damage. Try to do something on the other side of the map, but Major's opening kind of fell flat on its face because of the build Petraeus went for. Because Petraeus just had way more units than Major expected. Yeah. Major was looking for some economic damage. Instead, his build barely did anything, and then he suddenly has to defend at home as well. Knocked back as the player who we could still, uh, you know, say he's like a full-time StarCraft player. Um, up against the student, he's down 0-1. He is Major. Don't know that this map particularly screams mech. You can if you want. Uh, I'd still look for Terraform to be the map in this series. And yeah. On the left top side of Cactus Valley, of course, looking at our New Zealander. That's up 1 0. It is Petraeus. He's played very solid so far. I think he's definitely impressed a lot of people. You know, in the European scene, I said it before on the analysis desk. Uh, I want to say couch, but it's more of a desk. You know, all the Europeans always spoke very highly of Petraeus. He's, he's, like they, they, they described him as the guy, you just don't want to face him in a tournament. Because if you beat him, everyone thinks like, well, yeah, you're supposed to beat Petraeus. But it's like, it's not that easy. He's actually very, very good. So, you know, if you beat him, then everyone thinks like, well, that was supposed to happen. And if you lose, then there's something that's like, oh, wow, you lost to Petraeus. You're not playing very well right now. But that's just wrong. It's a misunderstatement. And Petraeus, even when he's not playing as much right now as he was a couple months ago, he's still an extremely solid Zerg player. You know, I actually played him in uh, my dreams to qualify for WCS, Nate. I How did that go? <laughs> Painful, <laughs> really painful. <laughs> a quick 0-2 in 18 minutes. Like he, nice. he just had way more than I expected him to have. <laughs> of course, everyone, uh, if you're above Master League or higher, you can always sign up for WCS qualifiers. Now, season three is the last season this year. Maybe the rules will change next year. But you know, everyone has a shot at making it into this competition. And me, despite the fact I knew it wasn't a realistic shot, I was like, you know, competing is fun. The dream. Yeah. You gotta keep the dream alive. And it's fun to compete, you know, and you play against good players like Petraeus. And, well, that was my uh, least fun series of the three qualifiers. Cause <laughs> I don't mind losing, Nate, but that series I lost a little too hard. It was a little too one-sided. You, did, you didn't expect to get wrecked that badly. Uh, I would have liked to kill a couple units here and there. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give me one trophy. Yeah. Just one. Come on, man. Play a little sloppy. <laughs> give me something to work with over here, okay? I got people watching. <laughs> <laughs> the reputation is on the line, Petraeus. Look out for a brother, okay? Petraeus is like, just play StarCraft. I actually talked to Petraeus about it too, because I was like, so you're in school and stuff? He's like, yeah, it's nice. I'm like, are you playing anything other than StarCraft? And he's like, no, I still only play StarCraft. I was like, I don't, this is so crazy. He's like, yeah, no, not full time, but you know, just, and I actually, and Jeff made the joke earlier when he was like, oh, he only plays eight hours a day now. I think he might actually still be playing like five hours of StarCraft a day. Like his, his full time was like maybe eight to 12 every day, but I, I still get the feeling that He's pretty much just playing a lot of StarCraft still. I mean, like there are many different types of gamers, but it's very hard to, uh, at least that's how I feel and that's how all of you feel. Like if you're extremely invested in one game and you know the scene so well, you know all the players and you even know your own playstyle so well, no matter really at what level you play, when you're that invested in a game, it's sometimes really hard to appreciate and enjoy other games. You know, for some people it's easy, they just play a little bit of everything, but if you go all out on a game like StarCraft 2 for over a year, it's suddenly really hard to sit down and be like, you know what, let's grab my Xbox and play this random shooter game or whatever. Yeah. You know? It's very hard to appreciate something like that when you've been so you know, over the top invested into StarCraft 2. Especially when you're making thousands of dollars yes, still that. playing StarCraft <laughs> while in school. That helps too, of course. That, uh, that helps, the t that tuition. <laughs> These huh. Lings trying to make something happen. You know, if that bunker was like, you know, five, six seconds later and those four Lings run by, they kill the Marine, everything spirals out of control and you cry yourself to sleep, but everything's okay. For major right now um, very stable standard setups at the moment 
You know, uh, we've been talking a lot about Petraeus, but for Major, this is starting to become a pretty damn big series as well. Major did not make it into the round of 16 once this year. That's, in my opinion, a surprise, because I've always thought of Major as one of the absolute best North American Terran players. Pretty much regarded as the best North American Terran, even though Masa had, had a couple of very good showings here and there, but I think most people would still say, no, Major is the best Terran player in North America. Not making it into the round of 16 once, after qualifying three times, I'd say that's surprising, and then of course there are always people who say, well, you know, he's qualifying from what is considered to be one of the weaker regions out there. Yeah, Major does not actually, uh, you know, even playing as a representative of America, he qualifies through the, through the uh, Copa, Copa America. Copa America. Yeah. Latin America. Whatever. And he, he is the best, basically, there. I think it's, what is it, usually it ends up being like him, Kalazur. Cats, Kalazur, yeah. <laughs> all those guys. And a couple other, there's definitely like a bunch of good players, but there's, there's a, a big there's difference. There's a scene there, but yeah. you know, Major is like, uh, you know, he's he's like a whole other level mm -hmm. usually. I mean, there's a difference between people who take off series of Bolt or, you know, your regular top 20, top 30 GM player. Like a couple yeah. of those guys in the Latin America scene, definitely good players, not to be underestimated, but, you know, not, not title ship contenders just yet. So for Major, this is a very big series. Even looking at this group, and this time he got his wish, he's playing over here in Southern California, very close to Mexico, didn't have to travel all the way to Germany. This is what he wanted. Uh, it would be very upsetting for him to go out, especially go out with, you know, losing two back-to-back -back best of threes. Yeah, and, you know, Petraeus, of course, always trying, you know, repping the Southeast Asia scene <laughs> as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys tuning in. Very passionate folk, actually. Very active when we when, when we see these guys win on Twitter, especially. Yeah, man. They're, they're cheering for each other. The Aussies and the, the New Zealanders, they're close when it comes they, to StarCraft. Yeah, yeah, they stick I know, together. I know right now Pig is watching, you know, and he's waving his little flag. He's like, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. He's like, Pig, he's kind of New Zealand. It doesn't matter, you know. Pig is still there <laughs> screaming, cheering for Aussie. This is how they roll, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great, great scenes. We have the first bit of aggression coming out now. Major going for a four, Hellbat drop. We do have factories coming up behind this. We will see mech this game. What can the Hellbats do? He's got four, also pushing to third base. The Queens can defend there. There's not Banelings here, so we're gonna see some drones die. Yeah, a couple drones will die, but he has to make sure that he splits up the Banelings, uh, excuse me, he splits up the Hellbats a little bit. And there we go, Major is indeed splitting up those Hellbats. Oh. Yeah, whoa, that one uh, helmet was such a juicy hit off on all those drones. Unfortunately, it didn't actually kill them. Yeah, and, the help, yeah, and the helmets on the right side, it didn't really do a whole lot. The screens kind of took care of that. I think that's very acceptable and for mutas, Petraeus. Mutas are coming out now. Yeah. This actually has me a little concerned. Okay, so Major starts up two Thors and missile turrets. I think he should be okay. But if the mutas find any area where they can get in, be really annoying. This main base mineral line just screams to me, you know, get some more turrets. He's expecting... Uh, Petraeus to just come straight down at the map, yeah. so the Mutas will run into that first turret. He might scare him into thinking that there's a turret in each mineral line. Yeah, I think that one turret in the natural will probably buy enough time for the Taurus to come out. There is a there is a chance it's going to be rather difficult for Major uh, to finish up that turret in the third base. That is kind of the moment. If Petraeus would see what we see right now, he would head over to that third base immediately. Yeah, the Mutas are coming in to work on this refinery in the natural expansion. We do have Baneling Speed coming in with plus one flyer. Uh, he needs to recognize that it's mech. These stores should basically tell him everything he needs to know. I mean, he sees a lot of Hellions as well after already killing four Hellbats and two, three Hellions on the right side. You know, if once again, if Petraeus would have had our vision, this would have been very annoying for Major because, yes, he has two tours, but tours running from the main base <laughs> towards your third base, that takes forever. That's very <laughs> frustrating. They're not the fastest units in the playbook, Roddy. We have a Roach Warren coming in and plus one ranged attack and an infestation pit. So Petraeus, he, you know, he's been a little bit surprised by this. The Baneling upgrades and Muta upgrades are not going to be quite as impactful. Mutas are always nice, but they're, it's difficult to end the game against someone unless you completely catch them off guard and, you know, they don't have any Thors. Mm -hmm. Now the Roach Warren is going down as well. Uh, there's always a moment where it can be very, rather difficult for the Terran to figure out, you know, how many tanks do I need? Sometimes you make a lot of tanks against a potential Roach Wave and then suddenly they show up with a crazy amount of Mutas again. That's something we saw Su try as well in one of his games with the Intel Extreme Masters Gamescon very recently. I've always been a fan of that, you know, Zerg's kind of showing Roaches, but then saving up for the massive, massive Muta switch and it's like, well, What's your NTL like? You got four tours? Well, try to kill 50 Mutalists, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you really think about it, handling mech, is, if, if the Terran player is being active at all in terms of moving out, because there are some, you know, more passive styles that are a little, little slower, to say the least, 
you, it's all about the one-two punch, you know? You throw a little, throw a few mutas, switch into roaches, and you either commit hard on roaches when they've built a lot of Thors, or you switch right back into mutas as they start building siege tanks. So it all depends on how much you can do with either one. But it's still very difficult, you know? A mecking Terran that's constantly scanning or throwing Hellions at you is going to see which units you're building. And if Major decides that he wants to play like a turtle mech style mm -hmm. and just cap max out and then switch into Ravens, there's, you know, not a whole lot you can do as a Zerg other than try to pull them out of position with like Vipers, for example. I'm kind of expecting Major to play very passive over here. Let's not forget, he hasn't won a single map yet today. Nobody wants to travel anywhere, go 0202. We were talking about that earlier today as yeah, well. The sensor tower tells yeah. me that as well. So, yeah, so the last thing you want to do right now if you're Major is move out and get caught out of position or with your tanks on siege and, get, and see your entire army get crushed. And from that point on, know that Zerg is going to be very rich and it's going to be borderline impossible for you as Mecking Terran to go up to four bases. So Mages is going to be like, I don't care what you're going for, I don't care how you want to break me, but go ahead and try. I'm going to stay passive and I can't really blame him for it. I think yeah. he's going to be very slow so this game. So many command centers being built. Really good point. And there are Vipers coming out now. We have Vikings being produced. Though I'm curious, though, Rowdy, what uh, what is the Viking count at? As these Hellions try to grab a few more drone kills. Mm, seven nine right now. Okay, nine. so he will have enough Vikings to deal with the Vipers, right? Petraeus, in an ideal world, would love to just max out and kill him with with Vipers. But that air transition is going to make that really tough to do. I think uh, Cactus Valley is also a, a very hard map for Roach Hydra to attack a three base Terran. Like when the moment it comes four bases, I think there's a lot more space you can work with. But on three bases, look at all these ch potential choke points. And yeah. how are Vipers going to drop those dream blinding clouds? Like I have there's, a ver yeah. there's so many resources too. Like you can you can get to Ravens on three bases. You know, you, you it's not that difficult. So you use the Vikings, you zone away these Vipers. Well, that's one. That's two actually. Major and now there's killing no both. way. There's no way to yeah. attack into this without Vipers. You right. need those blinding clouds. They are imperative. That's very well done there by Major. We saw a couple of very funny dances between uh, Vikings and Vipers when Fancy went up against Sue just last weekend. But this time Major... Oh, oh wow, don't do that. Those Banelings. Those Banelings had enough. They're like, well, either we're going to die to a tank shell or we're going to die to a rock. Yeah, I mean, the Hellions have been running in, grabbing a few drones here and there, being as annoying as possible. Those blue flame Hellions with the plus two upgrades actually do uh, two-shot the drones. Very effective against them. Uh, not that bad at all, you know. A couple of Hellions for 10 drones, slowing Petraeus down a little bit. Petraeus is not ultra rich by any means. Like, he's on four yeah, he's, bases. He's, he's getting a lot of upgrades in tech, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I mean, the Terran player, the Terran player is just uh -huh. naturally rich because they're just never worried about money. You're not going to lose any of the units in this army unless you get blinding clouded and then hit with ultras. But look at the tanks, they're already pre spread. Not sieging all of them is also really smart. And here comes that uh, that sky transition. We have a couple extra starports coming in, a fusion core. So we're going to see some battle cruisers, Roddy. That's pretty early, actually. I mean, I know we're 17 minutes into this game, but normally you just uh, you expect to see a few more units being blown up or die before you see a fusion core. Oh my god, look at these uh, Hellions. They're very good against light armored units like yeah. Hydra is. Those Hydras in low numbers get picked off. And those Hydras are way more expensive than the Hellions are. You know, trading them out is... It's quite a good deal for Major, who just wants to build more supply-efficient units. And he's doing a very good job in just losing a couple of Hellions here and there, but he's buying so much time for those uh, much strong units like Ravens, like Battlecruise eventually. He's still adding on a few more tanks as well. Is he not actually building Ravens? I don't see... Okay, he's just not getting the tech labs. I'm very interested, because with the Fusion Core already up, I would be surprised if he went straight for Battlecruisers. Yeah, we'll have to see if he gets the Corvid Reactor. He's making still a lot of tanks. That's no, he's going straight BCs. Okay, that is that is unusual. That gives me the impression that he wants to just push with a few battle cruisers to anchor his army. He could get rid of SCVs now too. Actually, he should. He should just yeah, throw yeah. away half his workers. If you're playing mech like this, you do not need SCVs. You want a bigger army. Look at the amount of uh, orbital commands he has as well. We're currently looking at uh, how many? Something like I think he has at least four or five by now. So, it actually has so many buildings, it doesn't even show up on yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Anymore. I was like, where is it? But it actually doesn't show. But we're looking at at least five uh, orbital commands, maybe six. I was like, am I blind right now? Like, why don't I see the icon? But Major actually has just too many he's, buildings. He's built so many buildings, it's not actually possible to show all of them. <laughs> all we know is that he has plenty. So, losing one of them, like, just happened. That's not a very big deal. What do you think about the tank count? Nate, 16? Is that a number that makes you happy? Um, yeah, that's fine. The thing is, if you look at what armies like this can usually be weak against, 
without Ravens, you're, you do have to worry about like a Corruptor Swell, for example. But the ground army is still such a threat that you basically need to go like, I'm not even sure, to be honest, because most of the time as a Zerg, you're expecting that sort of, um, you know, like, I'm not really sure what the best way to describe it is, but like that Turtle Raven mech -y sort of setup where you're worried about point defense drones. And I know how that, you want to describe that, it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, uh, that sort of style, to say the least, is it's like you can't really use corruptors against it because point defense drone just invalidates all your corruptors. And then by the time the point defense drones are gone or energy is used up, everything you have is dead. But that's not actually what's happening. So to deal with the BC, sure, their corruptors are nice, but there's so many tanks on the ground, Broodlords wouldn't even be a terrible option if you could somehow kill all those Vikings. Mm -hmm. Without mean, Ravens, course, should be doable. Yeah, of course, those tanks are gonna, or excuse me, queens are gonna have a hard time participating in the battle when there are so many tanks on the ground. They're doing a pretty okay job in general in keeping queens away from participating in those little air skirmishes. Not so much for the damage that queens provide, even though they do a little bit, but much more for their ability to keep corruptors and stuff alive. Yeah. I, I flying think, locust. Yeah, the flying locust. We could see a little bit of swarm host action. I don't know that I want to. I think that could have been a mistake. It's I been a, it's, it, <laughs> it's been a while. I was like, what is that? I was like, hey, there's something new. I was like, oh, that's right. That's our forgotten locust son. Yeah. The, the swarm host has not seen too much love. We have the uh, Yamato cannon being researched right now. More battle cruisers, more Thors. Oh man, look at these Ultras by the way. Like they're actually doing some serious work. They might be able to kill one of these planetaries over here. They've killed 15 SUVs, but we went over to this before. Kinda seems like Betrayus is doing major a favor. Now that is a very nice pickup though. Don't give him five bases just yet. He's Four building, bases. rebuilding the SUVs. Yeah. He built like five more. Okay, well that's just silly. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he is, the only reason why he doesn't have that much money is because he is building like the most expensive units Terran can build. But with all the upgrades, all the infrastructure. With these upgrades, I'm really happy. How many ultras does he have right now? He still has a good amount left over. Six. Okay, I would still like to see try to go for like a broodlord corruptor because I don't. I think broodlord corruptor uh, with the with is yoinks this? and no rate. Well, I don't know what that. What was. is this? It's lost two out of Maybe four. Maybe he wanted to go for some sort of weird flank. That was that was actually a really expensive loss. Yep. Wow, there's, there's no way you can break this. This is what I mentioned as well on Cactus Valley. Do you know how hard it is mm. to attack into a Mackin' Terran on this? Look at all these choke points. I'm just trying to think what the lack of Ravens allows him to do. Okay, Swarm Hosts are on the way now, but I, I think that Major's decided, he's like, you know what, this army should be unbeatable right now. Yeah. I think if he had 30 more supply, if he had six more battle cruisers, I think this game would be over. I would say at least get one Raven for the Crypto much, you know, just one. Yeah. That's nice. You I mean, he does scan. have scans for days. We got to give him that. Yeah, that's true. Ready to so Petraeus play. needs a way around this. The Corruptors are nice, but he doesn't have that, like, end mass. And six Swarm Hosts is a ton of supply. Yeah, His army is actually really, really weak because of the supply yeah, from yeah. the Swarm Hosts. Take I so do like this. Oh, that's a nice little run by. No planetary fortress, of course, over here. Still no. I mean, Major has to be a little bit careful. It's very unlikely that this army is going to die. I don't see it die, Nate. No. But if it would die, then Major is going to run out of resources quite quickly because he lost his fifth base. Yeah. I, I, I think if if wow. Petraeus could look into like the, the seeing eyeglass and know that there wouldn't have been Ravens made this game, a bigger commitment earlier into this air would have been so much more effective because the Vikings, better, yeah. the Vikings can really, really get picked off nicely by the Corruptors. Yeah, and the tanks are so far away that actually the Queens were participating in this battle for quite a while, dropped a lot of transfusers. Only two battle cruisers remaining, soon to be perhaps one. Petraeus has quite a bit of money. There are 15 Corruptors on the way. I actually think that's enough to take care of this air army at least. The bigger issue, I don't know if we have a greater spire, but you know, without Broodlords, how are you supposed to kill everything else here? Swarmos, Nate. <laughs> I don't know, Cap. <laughs> oh, they're in a very tricky position on the left side. Why would That's an doing? expensive run by. Pop them. Come on, they shoot. Already. <laughs> shoot, we're, little guy. We're out of ammo. <laughs> they do move fast, though. They've yeah. got, they've got, a, they got a good hustle, good work ethic. <laughs> they've got nice boots, man. Oh no, there's a random siege tank in the middle of the map. I was shooting at the Swarmos. Poor guys. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, the Swarmos, in case you guys don't know, those Locusts are <laughs> That's super powerful. This wave of Locusts could act, oh, if it had gone straight to that command center, I'm pretty sure it would have killed it. That took such a long time. But there's, but building Ultras with this many tanks, unseized, you don't need, you need to siege up the tanks. I think these tanks and these Thors will yeah. kill Ultras very easily. I mean, the Ultras do have uh, magnificent upgrades, but the same goes for this little mech army, so that doesn't really make a whole lot of a difference. 
But no great Aspire. And there's no Ravens. I, I mean, air, air was the only way, because Broodlords could kill everything else. But this is... I don't think this army can be stopped at this point. Petraeus was a little caught oh off guard God. at a few stages in this game. And now, even if you were to kill all these Vikings, oh, the, that's, that's, I mean, the, the Blinding Cloud is good, but there's actually nothing fighting the right. mech army, despite the fact that it's completely blind. Yes, it can't actually do anything. I mean, it's nice for the Corruptors, because I won't say it allows them to do pretty better against these Vikings, but in the end, that's not even enough. A couple of Locusts will swing in from the south side, try to save the day, but the supply pretty much tells the tale of this story. 94 against 177 supply. Major in absolute control of it now. With you know, a rather entertaining max style because at least he wasn't waiting forever yeah, this, for his ravens to get yeah, some energy. This wasn't quite turtle mech, but you know, it worked out either way. Major ties the series up. A very I want to I want to use the word greedy to describe this style. Like, not going for ravens opens you up to so many possible things. Like, sure we don't see broodlord, corruptor, viper too much against mech, and that's because. You know, you get seven, you know, to twelve ravens, and suddenly you spam out a few secret missiles, point defense drones. It's a pretty easy cleanup, in all honesty, for for Terran against Zerg, and that's what makes the Ultralisks better because the missile, tur you know, the auto turrets are kind of bad versus those units. And not going for ravens gave him that many yeah. extra siege tanks that it was okay that he rushed straight to BCs because. Petraeus did focus on the ground so like he would have against Turtle Mac. So you're saying that if Petraeus had our vision and he saw what Major was doing, he would have just rushed up to a Great Aspire and go for. I a... think it would have worked. Yeah. Like, you know, you can always argue that there's a lot of there's a lot of Vikings on the field. Like the Ultras had their moments here and there, but because of the commitment to Vikings, Vipers wouldn't work without a lot of support. You know, even if the Corruptors don't kill all the Vikings. It's more about you buffer for your Broodlords, hit those ground units, but also for your Vipers, because the, you know, the Vikings are only going to shoot at so many things. Like This was really a moment where I felt like, man, Petraeus is making some plays, as he just took out two bases, and there was only one mining base remaining on that point. I just think about if all these Ultras were more Corruptors and Broodlords, yeah. like you could win the game. You could win right here. You could kill this whole entire army that's right outside your base. Yep. Like, he almost barely won with seven Ultras that actually just sat there and died. Yeah. That is literally all those Ultras did. They just died. I mean, they absorbed a bunch of uh, shots here and there. Right? I mean, your Queens do like maybe five, four damage a hit to Battlecruisers, man. I would have I would have rathered some more Corruptors and Broodlords, but oh, well. it's a tough spot. You, I mean, you can't just know that a Terran's not going to build Ravens at all. It was, a, it was a great game regardless for Major, despite the fact that it got a little bit dicey in a certain point. He does even up the series. The final game will be played on Terraform, and after seeing how game number one unfolded, and now looking at game number two... If Major wants to win, he's playing Mech. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're not going to do anything else, right? It's just like, okay, well, this is obviously what I do best against. This is also what most Zerg players struggle with a little bit. And this is not Bridgehead. I don't have to worry about destructible rocks in the back of my main base. So I can actually safely play Mech, and I should be able to get all the time in the world that I need to create my dream Mech army. Yep, I'm very interested to know if we're going to see that style again, or if we'll have a more standard mech, or maybe, maybe he tries Bio again. It'd be very, very interesting to see um, from our Terran player, who has, who has brought things to a standstill here in the bottom right. Major, representing Mexico. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a gift. That's a gift for Reddit, right there. Yeah. <laughs> and over here on the left off side of Terraform, we're looking at the main base of my insanity. Petraeus showed us that he's uh, he still got it. Still got the goods. Definitely played very solid so far today. Would be great for him to pick up a victory. Maybe even go all the way, because you know, in a scenario where Paul could defeat Harstam, Petraeus against Harstam. Harstam's PvZ is very good, but Petraeus is kind of a wild card in that matchup. So could perhaps make some plays happen and obviously Major would love to get a shot at the revenge here at Harstam or maybe even go up against Bolt once more. Yeah that'll be a tough match especially when I just think back to Harstam playing against uh, Bolt in the round of 16 of last season which was brutal. pretty pretty brutal yeah to say the least you know Bolt, Bolt brought his A game you know of course uh, Hydra brought that that code S game but still very very you know, tough matchup for Harstam either way. You know, it, it should be no surprise, by the way, that Petraeus and Major are tied up right now. Because in the history of them playing against each other, they were actually 10 and 10. So now they're 11 and 11 in maps against uh, each other. And the score overall is 3-2 in favor of Petraeus when it comes to series. 
So you would say, you know, if Major wins this one, then he evens up the series, and he also has one map win more. Yeah, true, true balance, yeah. you could say, between these two players. Patrice opened up with a pool first again. Major, I would say, is definitely on the side of could throw two racks your way here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, like almost any other Terran, I would say, is way more likely than Pol. There's very few Terrans that just don't really cheese all that much. In fact, but, I have a hard time thinking about Terrans that don't two racks other than Pol. Let me think, Nate. I want to see if I can find one. Uh, Bunny doesn't do it a whole lot, does he? Bunny's very Sometimes. macro oriented. Bunny, yeah, Bunny doesn't cheese too much. I thought you were going to say me. I don't, I don't like to cheese too much. <laughs> well, Nate, I've been watching oh, wow. your stream. Just compare me. Average game length, 7 minutes and 3 seconds. That's because it's on the new Legacy of the Void timer, Robbie. <laughs> oh, of course, Nate. Good save, good save. It'd be like 14, it'd be like 14 <laughs> minutes. That's enough for two base SCV people. <laughs> As uh, Major checks out the main base of Petraeus, and he probably saw, well, he was able to put the pieces together, what kind of opening this was by just seeing the timing of that hatchery and seeing by how far along it was. Him uh, on the other end. We'll see. Uh, what do you think Major is going to go from here? Do you think he's going to throw a little bit of, uh, at least like a two base aggression, trying to make some plays with Hellions, Hellbats? Uh, maybe he goes back to that Widow Mine opening that we saw in game number one? Mm, I think just... I would like to see him just play safe. Really, I after the first game, I think Petraeus in a regular Zerg versus Bio Terran game, Petraeus just seems too comfortable. Like he mm -hmm. traded a lot of blows with Pole, who I would much more strongly favor, you know, in a TVZ than someone like Major, especially. So I think Major just got to take it slow. He could do maybe a little Banshee Hellion. I think that'd be fine. Um, maybe open with a fast yeah. Viking, but don't die to anything weird. Petraeus does and just take it to that long game. That's your best chance, I think, if you're major. Looking at the other side of things, look, uh, if you're Petraeus right now, and you just face that mech army on Cactus Valley and realize that, you know, it wasn't that close. You did a little bit of economic damage here and there, but by the time that major actually wanted to fight, it almost felt like you didn't really stood a chance. It's not that you even pushed the army back once. The army mar marched out one time, and once it did, it won the game, pretty much. Do we do something crazy over here? Because Terraform, like you said already, Nate, is a pretty damn good map for a similar playstyle of Major. It comes down a lot to the awareness. It's it's really hard to know as a Zerg player, for sure. Like, if you rush the BCs again, then I would say, yeah, just go fast air with all that economy. Don't go Ultras and you're fine. If Major played like a Turtle Raven mech, then I would say he could, Petraeus could actually do what he did the last game and he would be better off just, just by way of army composition interaction. But still, Fast Muta's never really bad opening in, uh, in Zerg versus Terran. It, it handles and shuts down a yeah. lot of what Terran can throw at you. I mean, Major has gone Command Center first in four out of his five games so far. And, you know, even including the previous series, he played against Harstam. So I really don't mind that Petraeus just completely skipped Zergling speed. And he's like, well, if you're going to go greedy, I'm not going to go as greedy as you. I'll play safer with a pool at first. But after that, it's just going to be drones, Leia, Spire. And from that point on, that's when I will start worrying about the first aggression that you could possibly throw at my way. Yeah, it's very interesting because Major actually had his barracks on the tech lab and had a Marauder on the way. And we can see these slow lings actually be, you know, it's like, okay, it's nice to have your Spire nice and quickly, but this is the weakness. These Hellions can actually do some serious amount of work. These lings popping at the right time, I'd say two out of four Hellions have been picked off. There are still two Hellions alive in the main base, though. Three drones have gone down so far. I kind of like the drone movement up to this point. I think Petraeus did a pretty acceptable job there. Despite, yeah, this this could have know. done a lot more for, for Major, I think. And Petraeus still has all those gas, so we can still see him move right up into those Mutalisks as the Spire completes. Oh, he wasn't building Overlords during that. Oh, he can't build the Mutas. He has to wait a little longer. Yeah, that actually does things, especially because look at that eBay. Well, it delays all the mutas by 25 seconds. Yeah, I, I guess it, it wouldn't have been up in time anyway. There is no eBay yet. He's still not building an eBay. It, he is going mech, so he's going to probably just go right into Thor's now as the armory completes. The, that is a little Cutting tiny close, bit risky, Roddy. though. Yeah. Cutting it close. That's what it is. I would say he's laughing in the face of danger over here. Imagine if he wouldn't have been supply blocked. Those mutas would have been out already. They would have been making their way across the map. What is the anti that Major has right now? He has Two Marine eBay half halfway done and his stores are just starting. Wow. If the mutas went right to the natural mineral line or even the main base. I still think he's gonna have a nice window of barely any anti-air nade. 
Yeah, I think he, I think oh he has a God. big opportunity right now. I really think Major made a pretty big mistake. I mean, that first turret is going to go down, but it's not done yet. These stores are only halfway down. Petraeus, despite the fact that he was supply blocked, will still set himself up for a very nice Mutalisk yeah, window over right here. Right to the main base. Oh SCVs my God. dropping left and right. There's just that single Viking. Like you said, Kev, the Thors are a little ways off, so another about 15, 20 seconds before they come out. I wouldn't even mind seeing focusing on the tech lab. This reactor yeah, is a reactor. juicy target as well. Told you, man, he laughed in the face of danger. Don't yeah. laugh in the face of danger, Nate. I'll Comes back to, to hunt you. Ooh, oh, oh my god! <laughs> Don't want to lose the mutas. <laughs> well, one or two will uh -huh. come. Okay. Man, that's three. Uh, suddenly feel a lot better now for Major. That that makes it a, almost better. Thing is, when you're playing mech, it's more about having those three SCVs, honestly, on gas on each base, rather yeah. than having full mineral saturation, because you usually float minerals anyway. So it's not the end of the world to lose some workers, but if that mute account snowballs or does more damage, then it gets tricky. Both tours are in the back of the natural, while these links uh, will take care of these Hellions. This is a nice little oh, window boy. again for Petraeus, because the tours are so far out of position. You know, Vikings are okay. Uh, he could actually fight this if he would only knew where the tours were. Yeah. Still, so far away. I mean, the muters regenerate their health very quickly. I think it's important to take yeah, it slow. Blue. Now, that third base, on the other hand, is a very juicy target. And, oh, Petraeus sees he sees the SCVs going to the third. He recognizes the opportunity, and he's going to pounce on it. These Vikings are backed up by the Thor. Do not want to engage them. I mean, not only do the Vikings have that great range to zone out with, but they're also great bait to pull the mutas into the Thors. Still though, I feel like Petraeus is doing a pretty acceptable job. It's not even that he's killing that much, but he's doing a really good job in slowing Major down, just forcing him to prioritize things that he doesn't really have to do. He did lose five Mutalists during all this, and that's not cheap of course, but when you play against a mech player, you want to slow down that economy. The depots are low, and a couple of Zerglings are just going to run in. And it's not a lot, but again, it's annoying. A couple yeah. SCVs, not Dis mining. He's distracting, pulling him around, being annoying. And Roach speed is almost done with 1-1. One, one. There's not a lot of siege tanks on the map. Two about to finish, but these mutas are still trying to be as annoying as possible. And if this is the only armory, losing this would really hurt. Major actually starts two more armories. He's he's actually just saying, yeah, you can have this. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother, mate. My bike's out of position. Tours are not here to save the day. Take it! Well, that's really awkward. Now he just left the armory. Major could actually repair he it, left and it, he left will. It hanging. So now Major can go triple armory. No, he cancels yeah, okay. one of his. This isn't like a Sea of the Void yet, Roddy. <laughs> he cancels one of the armories he was building. And now I, these roaches are getting ready to try to do yeah, something. Yeah, that's a lot of roaches, but I feel like the mech units are in a pretty okay position over here. Oh, if he yeah. puts the Hellbats in front of the tanks, he's going to be more than fine. This is a huge commitment by Petraeus, but I, I don't think he has enough, Nate. Yeah, it's going to be really tough to make work. He spreads out. He's moving in now. The tanks are firing away. The Thors hitting on those Mutalisks. I wouldn't even mind seeing those Vikings land after this fight as the Thors oh, get pushed it. back. Repair. Look at all these SVs hugging that one big Thor. That's yeah. the daddy. You know, the, 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 uh, Thor has more surface area, more area for those SCVs to surround and repair from. Major scans is like, okay, this is saturated third, but no gas. So that means that big roach attack actually took out most of your economy. Yep. And honestly, Petraeus' follow-up isn't really that strong. He's going to go right into an infestation pit, but he's so far away from a hive. Vipers, anything of that sort, oh, you're not going to beat this army with just roaches. It really felt like Petraeus was doing okay -ish for the majority of this game. And I almost felt like the moment he saw that army there, Maybe try to swing in from the north side, because look at that third base. There is nothing there on the high ground, right, yeah. for Major. There's not a single bunker, not a single depot making it hard. Those tanks would be forced to on siege, or at least he wouldn't be mining from this for a while. You could snipe those refineries. But I felt that Petraeus there, he attacked right where Major wanted to attack him, or wanted Major yeah, to be he, attacked. Yeah, he, he went right where Major wanted him to yeah. be, basically. And it worked out phenomenally for the Terran player. I'm quite concerned for Petraeus. I'm expecting Major to just play this out the same way he did the last game. And thing is, you talk about those high ground positions, now we have all these sensor towers dotting across the map. Good luck trying to take a high ground position like that yeah. without him realizing it. A couple of Hellions will cruise into the main base and see if they can roast a few more drones. As uh, so many drones have fallen today already. In this game, not that many yet, just 13 or so. Gets five, you know, stuff like this is okay, especially because Petraeus has never been very rich in this game and has never truly uh, had like a booming economy. It's never that he's been banking a lot of minerals or that he's been on four or five bases, never had access to a gold base. Even this fourth base is pretty damn late. I mean, it's very late, all things considered. Yeah, very late. Well, consider that Petraeus, the Zerg player, has less workers than the Terran. Like the, you know, with Mule economy, you, you just have a very, very rich 
very rich major. Uh, now we're gonna have this awkward little moment where both players are working on rocks. Major's probably looking at that army. He's like, well, I don't really think you have a whole lot. Throws down a scan. He's like, okay. Yeah, he's like, be this without vipers? Yeah. Easy. There are vipers on the way, though. So Petraeus is going to try to buy time for his vipers, but it's going to be very hard. And Major, he's not going to clump up all his tanks. I think this is going to be an extremely difficult hold for Petraeus, and I'm not sure how he's supposed to make it happen. Yeah, those doors soak up so much damage while the siege tanks just wail away. And here come SCVs to repair. He's going to keep this army alive and healthy. During all this, trying to take a support base as well on the right top side of the map. While Roaches and Hydras are looking for a pickoff anywhere, you know, just one or two. But Major has done a phenomenal job in zoning out his tanks. I really like this. A single blinding cloud will never cover more than two tanks, and one tank is never truly exposed because there is always a backup tank to shoot at units and try to pick it off. Uh, I really love the positioning and the execution. Yeah, and, and using these Thors, like the Vikings are zoning away some of the Vipers as well. The Thors are still going to soak up all these hits. There's that one blinding cloud covering two tanks that you mentioned, but the rest of the tanks in the back are just shelling away, Kev. The Queen's going to come out with these Hydras, desperately trying to hold this push. His Petraeus is moving in closer and closer on top of this army. He's cleaned up a lot of the tanks, but the, the tank line just doesn't end. It's so hard to go through these side blockers as well. I'm sure that any Zerg will have been in this area where you think you're cleaning it up, and then suddenly you have to go through this some good transfusions being dropped over there, keeping a couple of those roaches and hydras alive. And Petraeus has defended for now, but you know, this party is far from over. And again, during this attack, like I mentioned, Major took his fort base. You know, he's gonna have a very strong economy once more. Mech Terran on four bases, Kev. That is a very scary force to have to deal with as a Zerg player. I will say that, you know, to Petraeus' credit, Major has decided to play a pretty straight up mech. You know, just tank, Hellbat, Thor with some Vikings mixed in. This has not been that, you know, turtly mechs transition into Ravens or Battle Cruisers or what have you. He's played a he's played a pretty, you know, okay, I've got to 160 supply, push a plus two, did what I can. But you know, it's it, it's much more difficult to win games and pushes with this style of mech. Trace is sending an overlord to the right top side. I think he saw it before with the links, I'm not hundred percent sure, but now he definitely knows that this is there. Uh, could potentially send a couple of roaches and hydras. Even just sending a few units behind the mineral line is already a nice thing because the planetary fortress doesn't reach that far. So then at least you force the mech player to send a couple of units to the right top side, which is annoying on its own. Yeah, but now we have this siege up towards the fourth base. Trying to make something happen. Very scary though. A couple of these tanks actually could be all blocked by one yeah. blinding cloud. Actually, they're going to unsiege. The roach flank could pick off a few of these siege tanks as he starts to push in a bit closer to the actual fourth. So but this is such a hard position to fight though for Petraeus. I mean, it goes for both players, but yeah, he needs Petra the blinding clouds. Yep. He needs the dream blinding clouds. He's going to move in with the vipers covering just one siege tank. Yeah, there, this Gets is the actually moment. Three more on the right side. These roaches are able to get up close and personal with a lot of these Whoa. siege tanks. Petraeus actually surrounds the entire mech force completely cleaning it up and takes a supply lead. Wow, that was very well done. Of course, Major having a couple of tanks clumped up too much. And he's doing exactly what I just mentioned, just sending three roaches behind the mineral line. Stuff like this is very frustrating. Major still has money though, but he lost a lot of tanks. It's hard to rebuild that army. And Petraeus kept his fort base alive. He's really hanging in there, Nate. I thought this game could have potentially ended with that first big push of Major. Yeah, Major, you know, this is one of the reasons why you see people do turtle mech, because Zergs that use great positioning against a regular mech force, they catch you out of position and they crush you. You don't have those units you can fall back on like the Ravens or those sturdy units like the Battle Cruisers to clean house. And now, Major's in a very tough spot. He needs to, I mean, I would say transition to Sky right now, turtle up full turtle mode, but he might not have enough supply to actually do that anymore. Uh, he's taking care of those roaches on the right top side with a single tank, but he's been losing Rex as they are losing a couple of supply depots. And if you take a look at the map vision now as well from Major, he has absolutely zero map presence. And if there is one style you could say that's sort of acceptable with, in general it is mech, but it's still not nice and it's never a good sign. Look at this, he has, he has no vision whatsoever. Yeah, this is a really tough spot, especially since that third base, you know, that exposure is very, Ooh. very tough. Like, Thor's and Hellbat's okay, but now that supply lead, may, you know, Petraeus just has so much more than he did in the previous game. Wow, he can actually just gonna try it. This he, is it. It drops another good blinding cloud there as well, covering two tanks. There are not that many tanks remaining. SCVs are being pulled, but Petraeus at 180 supply has done the almost unthinkable when it came to that first push. But it seems like he's just done it. He's winning this game. Yeah, I mean, Petraeus going back to school, but still competing here, still giving wow. Major a lesson in some StarCraft II as he pushes in. GG is called. And the Mayan Sanity, New Zealand student, 
will advance, keep his dreams alive as he eliminates Major from Season 3 of the World Championship Series. Yeah, of course, Petrae is making it to the round of 16 in uh, Premier League Season 2. That was a great run for him, and he came so close to even going to the quarterfinals. Not a lot of people had a little less expectations, less high hopes around him, but he's played very well in both of his series. You know, even if this series would have gone the other way, he still had a great showing. But defeating Major over here in California, uh, it's a very impressive result. I'm actually a little bit shocked, Nate. I really didn't see it coming. Yeah, it was quite good, especially considering how well he performed with the mechanical strategy that he went for in, in, in Game 2. Like, he just, he everything was so well put together, completely crushed Petraeus. You know, a couple army composition choices here and there certainly made things tough. But in Game 3, Major, you know, it almost feels like you know, you're playing a more honorable style of mm -hmm. mech. And then Petraeus took advantage of that where you're able to win battles where you're behind on supply because Roach Hydra can just kill those unseed or blinding clouded tanks so easily. No, we were very impressed and I'm curious to see what the boys at the desk have to say about that series that Petraeus just played against Major. Definitely an impressive match. Uh, I, I would say to some extent from both sides because obviously going in, I want to focus on this right away. Uh, we were talking about how Major didn't really have a chance to shine, right? It was simply, you know, he just got counterbuilt and he just didn't get to play the game he wanted to. We did see that in both maps too and even the last map. I mean, Major was leading up to that point, wasn't able to wrap it up, but let's start there. Major takes game two, obviously, kind of shuts Petraeus down in the middle, right? How close was he in taking that also in game three? Because it looked like, I mean, Petraeus didn't really have a chance so far. In game three... I feel like Major had everything he needed to win that game. There was a few points even when he was pushing with his mech army, he was close to fishing it out, but it just seems like his macro slipped a lot, to be honest. He held, he held at this moment, which was the critical point, and then after this, he was able to amass his army. This was a great hold. You're going up against a Zerg opponent who's massed on roaches, and this is really the critical moment where he he seemed like he was in great position, to be honest. This is, this is a great spot for a mech player. Your opponent doesn't even have vipers out. You have perfect tank spread. You're really taking all plus EV engages here, you know? The tanks are going to trade out very positively. You're going to force them into these small chokes, pushing into Hellbats. I felt like it was great play all in all, but Major, I felt, slipped at the end. His macro wasn't what it was supposed to be. He was floating, you know, maybe 1.5k. Even here we see he's at almost 2k minerals, which is fine, but the Zerg player is always going to be able to, you know, reinforce a little bit quicker. And when you don't have planetary fortresses to fall back on, it's not, you, you, you either need to have more factories to produce or you need those PFs to buy you time. And he didn't have either. Yeah, he did a high, like, aggro style mech, which is dangerous, but unexpected. And, you know, Nathanus was talking a lot about how it's, like, more honorable. It's not the turtly, <laughs> invincible style. Um, but it, it, it has such high risk, high reward in the sense that you can catch a Zerg off guard because they're like, whoa, what are you doing here with these tanks? And if I don't take these very seriously, I can find myself in that choke like Huck was talking about, where you're just, I mean, you're getting wrecked by like three tanks. I'm not talking about ten. Uh, but Major did overextend a couple of times. Like, we just had that beautiful playback, and in, in all those fights, he just pushed a little bit too far outside of his reach, getting caught with uh, not, not so much like devastating blinding clouds, but getting surrounded both times, and like he had three Thors kind of on an island by themselves with tanks stretched all the way back behind that wall. Uh, he was ahead in supply in both engagements, but then just came out of it so worse for wear. The little bit of harass at the fourth made it so that the economy wasn't absolutely gigantic for Major, and then it just snowballed from there. So uh, this is definitely, uh, it's one of those games where he's going to put his head on his pillow tonight and be like, ah, I really should have won that game. That, that's a missed opportunity. I mean, when a Zerg does a Roach timing attack and it gets deflected as cleanly as it did, uh, like Huck was talking about, outside of his base, that should be curtains. Like, it's really hard for them to recover from there, but... I mean, if Major overextends, losing a mech army is a lot like losing a Protoss army. It's hard to replace. Now, before we move on, uh, one point you brought up was, you know, just how going a little bit more aggressive there is going to throw the Zerg player off. Obviously, in Game 2, something that, that was brought up a lot towards the end was just jumping right to the Battlecruisers, right? Mm. And we, uh, not we, but of course, uh, Rowdy and uh, Nate were talking about, all right, well, what if? What if Petraeus had known, right? Would he have been able to come back in this game? What are your thoughts about Map 2? Well, I mean, it was interesting. The Thanos was really harping on how useless the Ultras were, and if he just could have gone a little bit harder on air, a few Broodlords, and then, like, way more Corruptors. Um, but what a gambit that is. Like, I mean, if if you fight over the Thors and you have absolutely zero ground presence, like, yeah, the Broodlords are going to shine in there, but if they get a couple volleys off at your Corruptors, if they're all bunched up, it's really bad. It's just, Mech is a really tough matchup right now for Zerg. I mean, we just watched a series where he was able to overcome it, 
Uh, but that game, too, is kind of flashes of what it could be, where it's like, yeah, he went right to battle cruisers, but if the Zerg doesn't get that information within like a three-minute well, window, right. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, obviously, Nate was mentioning, you know, if Petraeus had right. the whole vision, had all the sight that we had as spectators, would it have been different? Possibly, but... And we it, didn't see what, what is the big problem, which is Ravens. Like, there's actually very little a Zerg can do with Ravens right now. In Legacy of the Void, they have Parasitic Bomb. There's going to be some answers there. But in Heart of the Swarm... Right now, it's like, nope, it's time to figure it out, boys. You got, you got, you got less tools, but you got to do what you can. And, and Petraeus did it with high aggression, nice harassed economy, and was able to survive and win. Very good. All right. Well, Petraeus moves on. Chris, what are we looking at here? How good do you think are his chances? Because I think just game after game, map after map, we're just being pleasantly surprised by, okay, well, you know, going back to school and whatnot, it doesn't really seem to have affected him too much. Yeah, I mean, a 2-1 loss to Paul, really nothing to be upset about if I lost to Paul 2 and I'd be like, hey, I was, <laughs> I was pretty close and the games, the games were pretty you close. You would say cast your life and like yeah. some hashtags. Yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be very happy to be honest. Uh, all in all, I feel like he's, he's right there. You know, a little bit, you know, he's a little bit luckier. He plays a little bit better, cuts out a fault, like a few small mistakes. He can take that series even against Paul. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. I mean, maybe he gets to play Polt again. Maybe it's Harstim. Of course, that's going to be the next match. From here on out, we're going to see who moves on to Poland for the round of 16. Next one coming up, Polt versus Harstim. A bit of a rematch from the Season 2 Finals in Toronto. We'll find out who gets that first seed from Group A.